The forward TCP IP host sends data over an Ethernet-based network. It first determines the MAC address mapped to the IP address of the destination host. How does it do this? Through the ARP process? Yes, but sending a broadcast ARP request message to obtain this mapping is in the first line of action for the host. This device must consult a local database that records ARP data for previously discovered entries. We'll talk about this database in today's presentation. Hello guys, we'll talk about the ARP cache table. A cache is simply defined as a high-speed memory where data is stored. Data stored in a cache are usually temporary and saves processing time as they are swift to retrieve when needed. Computer network hosts maintain a special database for storing ARP mappings so it can be retrieved quickly for subsequent transmission of data. This database is called an ARP cache table or an ARP table. An ARP cache table comprises a list of ARP entries showing the IP address to MAC address mappings of devices on a local network. An ARP entry can be static, that is, manually configured by an administrator, and is suitable if the MAC address and IP address of the host is least likely to change, such as on servers, gateways, or printers on the network. Dynamic ARP entries in an ARP cache table are learned through the address resolution protocol process and usually time out after a certain period. Every time a host broadcasts an ARP request packet, it is received by all the other hosts on that segment. Before the target device responds to this message, it will learn the ARP mapping of the source device and add this entry to the ARP cache table. Hosts having ARP cache tables with an existing entry for this mapping simply update the entry by overriding the existing MAC address in order to extend its lifetime. ARP cache entries expire after a specific period called the aging time. Beyond this period, an ARP entry becomes invalid and needs to be removed from the ARP cache table to avoid issues that may arise due to stale entries. Some implementation of ARP require a host to probe this IP address before removing the dynamic entry after the aging timer expires. In this example, all four hosts are configured with ARP aging time of 10 hours. After about 6.5 hours, host B's IP address changes for some reason. This means the ARP entry for host B in all ARP cache tables are now invalid. But, due to the long aging time, other hosts won't be aware of this change. Assuming host A wishes to communicate with host B, and host B's IP address is now assigned to a new computer, host A will still send the packet to host B's hardware address. And host B will drop this packet during network layer processing since the destination IP address is no longer its own. This leads to packet loss on the network and low network performance. On the other hand, assuming these hosts are configured with an aging timer as little as 10 seconds. This of course deals with the stale entries problem and makes the network problems free. But is it really? When the number of devices increases, such as in a metro Ethernet environment, this will cause large amounts of ARP broadcasts on the network, thereby consuming bandwidth and CPU resources. The highest ARP message flood will be experienced when all devices attempt to carry out address resolution at the same time. The tendency of this occurring becomes greater as the value of the aging timer is further decreased. Increasing the ARP timer might as well take us back to the first problem. But how do we find a balance? It is important to note that two broad classes of equipment exist on a network. One of it is the infrastructure equipment, such as routers, switches, firewalls, and other devices used to build the backbone over which services are provided. And the second class are the user terminals, which access and utilize these services. 
User terminals are known for high mobility and constant powering on and shutting down. Hence, these devices require short ARP timeouts as entries in their ARP cache table for mobile clients would become invalid when they move to a new network. Furthermore, the ARP cache table is stored in the RAM on a device. This means ARP table data will be lost when a device is powered off. This in fact makes it recommended to use shorter ARP timeouts on terminals. On the other hand, it is more beneficial for networking infrastructure equipment to have longer ARP timeouts. These devices, although with high processing capabilities, need to utilize a large part of their CPU resources to perform their core functions. Having high ARP timeout means reducing the average number of ARP requests sent by a host within a given time as entries would stay longer in the ARP cache table. ARP requests received from user terminals with already existing mappings in a local database will be processed for a shorter time, since these entries will only need to be updated in the table. In practice, the default ARP timeout value on most vendor products really does not need to be modified, except in some special cases. Other mechanisms used to prevent the existence of stale entries in the ARP table will be discussed further in this series. Please subscribe and turn on bell notifications. See you in the next one and thanks for watching.